and in particular our society at large, for which this topic tonight will be largely impacting as well. Have your way now, Mr. Lord of Host. Be thou exalted, the rock of ages. In Jesus Christ, mighty, much less name, we are prayed. Amen. Amen. Over to you, media, for the praise and worship.
Praise the living God. I need to know that I'm getting hard. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Good evening, brethren, and thank you so much. We give all the glory to God indeed for tonight as we gather together once again to study at the Lord's feet. Um, just let me bring up my screen there you go can we all see my screen loud and clear Media, please help me out. Is my screen clear? Everybody, can everybody see the screen? Yes, it's clear. Yes, it's All clear. All right, thank you so much. Okay, um, without further ado, given the time slot that we have left right now, we've got to move fast. As many as were here last week, by God's grace, can attest to the topic we dealt with, which was largely uh, on the godly home or God's concept of, uh, of home. And we went through um, a number of I'll just take about five minutes to run through this one so that we can move on to today's own. We reflected mm -hmm. on the period and uh, confirmed that the, um, every alternative savior to Jesus Christ has been given a, an early retirement. This is not only in uh, our spiritual work of faith, but in everything that concerns us. Uh, Christ is risen, he is risen indeed, and every alternative savior, every alternative method, every alternative program uh, to God's program has been proved an ineffective, inefficient, and uh, cast out in Jesus' name. Uh, we went through the understanding God's concept of the home, the structure and the order, the codes or the running laws or rules and regulations at home, the hierarchy is stated in here for those who are not here last week. I'll be moving a bit fast, but you can still consult the uh, YouTube for the recording. But suffice to say that here we recognize the fact that we need a foundation. We need the, uh, a, a structure of the body and then we need a roof over it and of course to furnish the, the, the home. And except the Lord is involved in the house, the labor in vain that do make effort to want to build it. And if the foundations be destroyed, it can be quite a challenge for even the righteous to do something. It does not mean that nothing, uh, nothing is impossible with God. God is able to do everything. So I want us to continually keep an open mind for what we are trying to do uh, in this season. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Um, by the way, the Slido platform is still open. And this disclaimer still works uh, to the intent that every example that we give or every uh, testimony or names mentioned rather um, and not with any particular specific uh, reference to anyone, but they're just purely generic. Uh, what we encourage each other to say we will be like the man in the mirror. 
be the man in the mirror, please. Stop by that mirror. Don't be a forgetful hearer. Change immediately you see yourself in the mirror or the word of God hits you and be a different person from tonight in Jesus' name. We went through this song last week and uh, I think we can still take a minute to reflect on it because in all honesty, brethren, the challenges today, the topic we are going to also deal with today, calls for a serious holding our God serious in our work and holding everything that we have to do uh, with, uh, with, with intentionality. Uh, because mm -hmm. without purpose, as we have learned, abuse is uh, inevitable. So I want to pray God and request everyone that please we take this uh, message very seriously and not uh, and not uh, just like one of those things. And I still don't know which vessel the Lord will use to minister to us tonight. So let's be open as to what the Lord will do with us tonight. We reviewed the past week and past month. We went through the structure and from the beginning, what God designed us about how to build a house. It's not good for a man to be alone. Um, and then he made a helpmate for him right from his side ribs. And then one knows about the laws or the rules and regulations and where the permissions were perverted a bit for the sake of hard-heartedness of men. That's number two in the case of Moses giving permission to what has now become almost like a norm today. And then it's asking us from which foundation you are laying or building your home or building your house. It is our prayer for everyone trying to raise a home, whether you are still single married or married and divorced or widowed and you are looking forward to a new relationship all this formally from the scriptures apply to all of us as a wise and master builder god says he has already laid the foundation and others can build on this but there's a warning let each one take heed how you build on it uh, we can exercise our freedom of speech freedom of uh, uh, what they call it choices which we all took from an Adamic fall in Genesis chapter 3, and to date, many as many as possible are still writing under the agonies and pains of trying to decipher, really, is it white or black? Is it blue or red? Many are not as simple as the pictures you are possibly looking on the screen tonight. And we also convince ourselves that we're going through these simple scriptures that God uses to guide us on how to raise a home, uh, the foundation, the requirements, counting the cost. Is any one of all this difficult? We saw in the paragraph in the passage on the right of the screen. For this is the love of God that we just keep these commandments, and his commandments are not what? They are not burdensome nor grievous. We mentioned I'm gonna through foundation, the body, the roofing, and fin and finishing. Uh, we must count the cost and put our hands to work to get the very best. It's not just uh, uh, if wishes were horses, then of, sure, of course any and everybody will want to ride. Be that as it may, we went through the wisdom, the understanding and the knowledge. If you want to build a home, if you want to build a godly home or translate your house to become a godly home, you got to plan, you got to uh, prioritize the plan and you got to protect it, work at it, putting your hands together, two of you especially the man and the woman or the husband and the and the and the wife of course as the children come up they join in in applying wisdom to turn a house to build a house and then understanding to establish it and then knowledge to fill the chambers to furnish it proverbs 24 verses 3 to 4 um we also went through the codes which we tagged or gave an acronym of a uh, slow or calm down slow down uh, wives to submit, husbands to love, children to obey, service staff or workers to work obediently, to work with their hearts sincerely and not uh, uh, with an eye service. And we also discovered again, this cannot be compared with anything else that we can say is difficult. Rather, in other words, these commandments are very easy to understand and then to put to practice. But of course, by the help of the Holy Spirit, we may not be able to do it by ourselves, but through God. Uh, we I highlighted the elements of a godly home or Christian home that we do desire to have in this particular area before we said the prayers last week. We also went through the same, <coughs> excuse me, the keys of wisdom to sustain 
in the home. It is one thing, it is one thing to build the home, it's another thing to sustain it. And we went through all these elements of uh, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Um, it does not matter how bad your situation or circumstance may be before now. We have an assurance in the word of God, if only you are willing and obedient to do what? To have your path corrected because we serve a God who is able to go to where? To go back in time into our foundation, reset it. He's also able to go ahead of us into the future and reposition us so that we will not be uh, unduly or wrongly surprised. Praise the Lord. Without purpose, we did establish last week, Romans 4.15 and Judges 21.25, which we shall touch a bit, a bit on again today. <clears throat> Abuse becomes inevitable. It's a prayer that we will not take uh, our life with levity as to start becoming undue victims of, um, of all kinds of uh, shenanigans. God will help us in Jesus' name. We uh, went to some wise sayings and uh, wisdom here was contrast, compared and contrasted between the godly wisdom, godly wisdom in white and uh, demonic wisdom in, uh, in red. In other words, if you pick your Bible, James chapter 3 from verses 13 to 18, you will notice 14, and 16, 14 to 16 is focusing on the bad side or the bad type of wisdom. Uh, whereas uh, verses uh, 13, 17, and 18 tells us more about the godly wisdom, highlights of which you have on the screen. It must be pure, undefiled, peace-loving, uh, cautious, considerate, um, willing to yield. I think one of the problems we will discover today, or a fundamental problem, is our discipline level or our obedience level. If you are not willing, honestly speaking, there is very little anybody or many people can do than to just keep on praying for you, which you also should be able to do. But I pray God that God will give us, give us a new heart, a new dispensation from this season uh, towards the things of the Lord and whatever he has given unto us to handle well. Out of this home that we are talking about, come new children very young, innocent ones that God just used us as vessels or vehicles to bring them forth to the earth. He has his own personal programs for each and every one of them. But if we don't play our own part in bringing them up in the way of the Lord, we might be setting those children up for a very wrong uh, future for which uh, uh, the law of sowing and reaping will surely still come in. So we must be unfeigned, impartial in all our dealings, full of compassion and good fruits, and of course, the harvest of righteousness are with everyone that conforms with such wills. Uh, we highlighted the seven pillars of wisdom from Proverbs chapter 9, verse 1, uh, for another season to handle. It's not for this season, but take note that you need trust, you need integrity, you need generosity, you need diligence, you need the watchfulness with your words, mind your language, friendship, and then personal purity. Um, Praise God. And then we won finally on the key challenges that offenses must come. If you are coming into a relationship of building a home, a godly home for that matter, offenses must come. Christ told us that if he himself went through challenges, we may not be able to defile it. Now the matter triangle, which is a very key one, is on the screen here. But he gave us, out of those offenses, Christ gave us resolution part, which if we also uh, avail ourselves with, we will be able to wriggle out of every challenge in uh, conflict management or offenses resolution. Uh, engaging in prayers, counsels, and home-related courses like pre-marriage course, marriage course, parenting, all those options, and they are seeking help in terms of talking to therapies, psychologists, they are good. Uh, God provided all this for us, not for fun or to despise. You just have to be very choosy in who and where you are going into. Now, this I st I'm stopping here for under half a minute because many are unaware or take lightly the fact that because you want to form a very godly relationship, a very nice one, you are so kind and so sweet with your spouse. And as I'm even, I'm even ready to bring up your children in the knowledge of the Lord, you will think that because of those good attitudes and good plans, then devil should keep quiet. No, please. This is the building block that God has made for us to get back in fellowship with him from where he has already thrown out Satan from the earth, from the from the from heaven back to the world here. And so Satan cannot be happy with anything called family. And that is why you have several alternative 
uh, means of raising a, a home right now that we call Alternative uh, Saviors. And like we said, we're just learning from Easter that just passed last weekend, that what mm. that every alternative arrangement has been proven ineffective is for more than donkey years right now. So, but if you are still in doubt, please make effort to find out and be convinced. But if you are entering into this game, or into this uh, laudable part of life, be aware that you have a number one enemy. From the beginning, the devil's battle cry is to break your relationship. And knowledge is power. If you're already that knowledgeable of it before you enter into it, it should not be too difficult for you to move forward. We went through certain areas of conflicts, communication, which is the greatest one, is the key. Uh, some people will say, uh, you know what, I, well, you know me, I don't talk much. Even then when we're cutting, you, you know me already. Please, there's no such cold treatment or silent ways of dealing with people. We must be able to come out to talk. There should be no shame in this and there should be no secrecy at all. You, are, you should be both naked, that is husband and wife, and not be ashamed. And if you are still dating and you are no longer a child under 20 or still at school, when I'm in school, I mean, maybe you're sitting in the university or college or whatever, where you are focusing more on your or in your studies and this, uh, having a relationship is a secondary item, then you can give that one much space and time. But where you are already finished school and you're working, please do not waste your time. You are all mature enough, about 25, to sit down together, man and woman, and say, hey, what are we here together? Let's 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 be open and speak straight. And if it's going to work or you are interested, make it no, make their way known and play straight away. So, so we pray to our Lord and Master Jesus Christ. If it's not going to be so, make it also known. You know what? We can be good friends, but this part that of your interest, I'm not too convinced at this particular point. And that should not cause enmity. Some of us have been indoctrinated in the ways of the world, the alternative ways of the world, alternative ways of the world in forming relationships. And so we come out of some of those things with serious and heavy bitterness. Some are so bad enough that they even go into depression and uh, some even end their lives from there. You don't need to. This life is too sweet that to just end up because one one woman or one man says no to you. Abba, there are many others on the streets just uh, waiting. My only warning there is for men, when you are going ahead on this kind of journey, stop applying the hazard light or flashing and flashing. You'll confuse our young ladies because they don't know whether you want to turn left or you want to turn right or you are going straight. So be declared whether it's for Sister Mary or Sister uh, Rose and uh, uh, dashing your eyes across from left to right like a wiper. No. Bible says in uh, Job 31, 1, I made a covenant with my eyes to so do what? To so look straight. If you are going for uh, Sister Grace, the grace of God will prevail for you in Jesus' name. Um, so we have uh, handling differences, spouse support, finances. These are areas of challenges. And the three step of conflict management that God recommended to us, and it's still working till tomorrow. Call one on one, call a witness. Call a witness, one or two witnesses, or tell the church, hand over to the church. And if you are willing and obedient along all these lines, you should have no problem with getting your challenges resolved and moving forward from there. Like I said, my, own, my experience has shown me that many of us are finding it difficult to be willing and to be obedient. And the Lord will help us to break those uh, challenges tonight again in the place of prayers so that we can move forward with our relationships in Jesus' name. These are the helplines we talked about and prayer points from last week. Now we are on to this week. Before we continue again, if you are having questions that you think will be too private, you do want to ask via the chat platform or when or by raising your hands, just to inform me, inform me that the slido is still open. You can scan this plan barcode or QR code rather and uh, start throwing your questions as 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 you like. Okay. Uh, today, I, we're with, I, sorry, did I have somebody saying something? Yes, sir. Praise God. Sir. Praise God. Yeah. I have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, you, because you mentioned something about a young man, you know, ladies or blah, blah, about whom. I just wanted to know, uh, <clears throat> what is God's concept about what today we call a common law partnership in Canada? Common law partnership. In Canada, yeah. What is God's concept about it? How does it tally with the word of God for Christians? Okay. I believe we will come to a page or a slide on this that will uh, have more time. But for now, so that I don't just forget about it, 
uh, we really need to know the definition of some of these words that we use, e.g. dating and courtship, friendship or relationship. They carry different meanings depending upon the society in which you are or in the community that you are. But if I take Canada uh, common, common law partner, as you said, uh, because when you are applying for things like passport or even um, uh, what do you call that, in a residency card or whatever, they ask similar questions to the ones that you are married to effectively because they hardly even give you some options like your wife. Instead, they try to use all these kind of confusing generic names, which is what we are trying to guide against so that people do not fall victim. Uh, if you have a wife and you check the definition and there's no other alternative than to say common law partner, it means that it is the partner that the law of the land recognizes here for you as a partner, as a spouse. Uh, many times we try to avoid use of the right words like wife and husband. Uh, Christmas, we start calling it holiday. It is just like dancing around issues, but God cannot be mocked. So unless uh, you have another definition for what you just said, sir, my thought will be for your wife, if you're a man, or for your husband, if you're a wife. Of course, for those who are not yet married, it will just naturally not apply. They have to look for other, other, other provisions. I don't know whether I tried to answer your question, or you have some other something, sir. To... Yes, sir, or Pray, yes, ma'am. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Common law partnership in Canada means that the two people are not married legally, or whether in the court or in the church or anywhere, but they are living together. And because they want, to get, uh, they want to get all the benefits of a family, because you say husband and wife, there are some benefits by the government to them. They also want to enjoy those benefits. So they go in that partnership and say they are common law partners. It is against the word of God. Two people, husband and wife, I mean, a man and a woman cannot live together and be, uh, in, uh, and be engaging in the benefit of what is God has already ordained for marriage. So a partnership, that uh, common law partnership is not is not according to the word of God. It negates the word of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Brother Ima Otu, are you a bit satisfied with the interpretation subject to the definition of the terminology? It was a question to everyone, sir. Ah, praise the Lord. Yes. So yes. I want to do that. Everybody also praise, benefited praise from the Lord. Hey, Pastor, go ahead, sir. Yeah, just to uh, buttress the point that been made by our, our, our mommy. Yes, that is exactly the way it is. So common law partner is not biblical. So it is two people living together. Uh, it's not marriage. So, but they, it's recognized by the government. So two people choose to live together. They are not actually... Uh, planning to marry, but they are comfortable enough. I mean, they are they are living together is okay by two of them, but they don't want to get married because so that they can, anytime they want to walk away, they can walk away at any given time. Okay. So it's not biblical at all. All right, sir. Thank you so much, sir. And I think by extension as well, especially for the for our young ones online. It means in these hard times where people are finding it difficult to raise mortgage, to buy a house, or to get mobility, uh, common sense therefore prevails that they should look for windows in the law that they can exploit to get what they want to get without, without really making commitment. As the speakers before me have said, if it is going to be cohabiting under the same roof and pretending as if you are married, then do not fool yourself. You are not into marriage. You can as well do that your gentleman's arrangement and still be under your different roofs as uh, under your parents or whatever. But generally, the church will advise against it because it's a window open, very easily open for us to fall into temptation. And God is not interested in such falling. Okay. If there's no other comment on that one, shall we make progress? Or you want to have any extension on it with Brother Otu? Are you okay with that? No, I, I just wanted us to, to, to discuss it because um, 
you know, like we've all said, you know, it's clear, but there's this mindset, like you mentioned, people believe that the uh, Bible says we should obey the law of the land. And since the law of the land permits common law, people can now engage in sexual immorality without getting married, and they say the law sanctions it. That's the angle I was looking at. I was going to so that we understand, because as we talk about it, let's look at what happens to us here. And it's all over the place. And I, I you know, so that's why I'm asking it. Thank you, you so know. much. I think that's a very good one. So for everyone who may be who may, who may, who may be considering that thought, let's encourage ourselves to learn from the scriptures. So we are doing learning, unlearning, and relearning the right stuff. Even though the law of the land may allow for it, if it is not according to the word of God, you may not want to get yourself involved as it may land you on the wrong side of the divide. I think it's Paul that said it, that uh, all things are what? They are lawful, but not all things are what? Are expedient. I think we leave it at that for now. We can take more questions later. Let's quickly run through today's session. We are dealing with a very touchy topic today, divorce. And as usual, I, I, I um, stand on my um, disclaimer of last week, which I believe is still here, uh, to say that, please, we are very sensitive, item number three, to any and everyone with similar storyline to anything that we shall be discussing today. We are not belittling or, or relegating or uh, low profiling anybody who is going through. This is a very, very serious challenge in Christendom and in the entire world today. A few years back, I think about a decade, it used to be like almost one in three marriages that was failing. It, it got that bad. But we thought we have seen it all. But today, honestly speaking, go online and check by yourself. It's almost every one in two marriages right now that is getting challenged. The ones that have not yet come to the open, if you are, if you are given the benefits of hindsight of the law to see their inside, many are just cohabiting the name of marriage, but they are actually already falling apart. And it is not in our own place to want to make fun of them, but to work, to work with them in prayerfully and all means that we can engage for restoration. Because God is not interested in any man perishing. He made it known clear to all of us. But that we may all come to the knowledge of his true word, get to the point of conviction that we call the turning point, and then do what? And just make a change. Turning point. Just repent. And then begin to do the good works. Revelation chapter 2, verse 5. Remember where you fell. That's the first step. Second step is to go back. That is repent. That is a restitution. Repentance. And remember, repent, and then begin to restitute your ways by doing the first two works. I said it in the in the same, uh, I think it's somewhere here. Yeah. And item four on my right on the screen. Remember, repent, and begin to do the first two works. Revelation 2 5. Let us be doers and not just hearers. Let's be not a forgetful hearer, but doing the word of God. So it's a very touchy subject, and I will quickly go through a couple of scriptures. Malachi 2 16 is a focal scripture. For the Lord God of Israel says, What did he say? That he hates divorce, for it covers one's garment with what? With violence. Therefore, he wants, take heed to your spirit that you do not deal treacherously. Now, there have been scholastic debates over what I hate or not hate. Does it constitute sin or not sin? God will help us this evening in the next few minutes to decipher spiritually in the name of Jesus Christ. And I'm sure some of us will have watched many uh, references or, or read many, many books before now on this same subject. Just follow this word. It says, take heed to your what? To your spirit man. So what is your spirit man telling you about this subject? The scripture is very clear. God hates it. And whatever God hates, we are supposed to also do what? To hate it, just like he hates sin. He hates uh, lying, cheating, all those kind of negatives. God hates them. I think it's also in the book of Proverbs um, 16, 6 to 9. Six things, yay, seven things uh, that God hates. And he mentions them out there, including lying, cheating, stealing, uh, uh, running with your feet swiftly to shed blood, you know, all those things. 
God hates them. And when he hates them, he's saying, depart from them. Because they can easily land you in the sin proper. In fact, I think this hatred will be qualifying for what we call a temptation. Temptation. You are tempted to do what? To commit sin. But when you get a, when you get a flag, when you get a, a, a warning, step back from it before your temptation lands you inside what? Inside sin. Even when it comes to uh, something like anger, which is second next to pride amongst the seven deadly sins, Bible also wants, with even a caveat that you are free, you are allowed to be angry. Ah, Jesus Christ got angry and flogged everybody who was trying to trade in the church out to say, you guys, I want to turn my house of God, the house of prayer, into a house of uh, trading. He physically flogged them all out. But that does not mean that he hated them. Immediately he finished that one, he began to preach to them again. So with one hand we punish, with another hand we do what we call them back to say, you know, you still have a chance to make it. And that's our prayer tonight for everyone that's on the verge of slipping from temptation into deep sin. That I means some of them may have, may have no reverse. God will help you to take that holy break and reverse right now in the name of Jesus Christ. So take heed and make sure that you do not do what you do not deal treacherously. I may be going ahead of myself sometimes in what I'm trying to say that I can save time. This point is talking to those who are already familiar with what the scripture says about the only one condition under which you can go into divorce. And if I say, if I ask everybody, I'm sure to say, on, on, on mute yourself and say the condition. All of us shall shout the word adultery or fornication. Mm -hmm. Fine. But who knows? The acid question is who knows who, what led to what and whose action or inaction led to that adultery or fornication. So before you just jump into conclusion and running off our heads <clears throat> like the uh, Pharisees and the Sadducees that came to tempt Jesus Christ in the next passage here, which is uh, Matthew chapter 19. Uh, when they came to ask him, we, we should be careful to find out the root cause or the small screen behind the offense. In the book of John chapter 8, we are all familiar with that passage, John chapter 8. I'll be quoting many as I can remember because these things are just flooding. But I also have very many on the screen for everybody to go back at because this is Bible study. But we have limited time. But with your, your pictures or records of this, we can go back and dig more. John chapter 8, they brought a woman to Jesus. These same accusers of brethren who think they are so self-righteous, they are so right. Hey, we caught this woman in adultery. So Moses said this one, what do you say? It's like they are comparing Moses with Jesus. For heaven's sake, the difference is too clear. And then this who have uh, on their, on their this self considered uh, righteousness, self self-righteousness trip. You can almost see their nakedness. Does anybody commit adultery single-handedly? How come you caught only the woman? Where is the man that she committed the adultery with? But you brought only the woman and say, "Hey, what shall we do with it, with her?" And they were, they were they were not only just asking. All of them are having stones already in their hands to so complete what they have in mind as the judgment. But as we saw, the wisdom of God that passes all understanding prevailed on that day. When Jesus just asked them, it's a very simple question. He who has not sinned, cast the first stone. And then Jesus began to write on the on the ground. We don't know what he was writing, but some scholastic uh, estimation says maybe Jesus was just putting down the names of all those who are present and holding stones. Uh, so as they came around and saw their name, ah, my name is on this list. Each one began to drop their stone and disappear. May your sins convict you tonight. Not only to go and not, not to go and come, come, commit sin like Judas, but to be like Peter, who also felt bad at the crucifixion and uh, Easter that we just celebrated last week. And instead of going to commit suicide like Judas, he turned back. God is interested in our repentance and returning back to him. So this is very, very key for me to spend some time with us so that we can have understanding for the rest of the slides we'll be going through. That's Malachi 2.16. So God hates it. And the warning is that you should take heed to your word to your spirit, because the spirit of the Lord is inside of you. And if you work faithfully with God, you will get to know what he wants you to do with it, whether you should abandon, whether you should move on to go and even remarry, he will tell you. But don't come and expect another Jesus to come and tell you you should, uh, yes, you should kill him or kill her and then go and remarry. No, 
the likely question you will get is that if you have not committed a sin beforehand, then go ahead and do that thing that is in your heart. And you will find that it's not that as easy as uh, as, as well. And uh, let me also say quickly here, because there's a passage on the screen here. I'm not sure whether we shall get to it very easily, but if we do because of time, fine. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 3 to 4. If anybody is there, can really read it for us. First Thessalonians 3, uh, sorry, 4, 3 to 4. First Thessalonians 4, 3 to 4. If you are there, please read for us. Come on, come on, come on. Anybody online, read for us. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. Students of the Bible, teachers of the Bible. First Thessalonians 4, 3 to 4. For yes. this is the will of God even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel um, in sanctification and honor. Please read up to six. Okay. Not in the lust of concupiscence, <laughs> even yeah. as the Gentiles which know not God, yes. that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. that the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. Praise God. Uh, with that uh, mentioning words, this passage is warning us about the most serious aspect of any um, marital relationship or opposite sex relationship, the most sensitive part in all this is the sexual part. And God so made it so sacred, so sanctimonious that he says, look, you got to be focused and decided and be serious about what you want to do with any relationship so that you can move righteously, you can move consistently. But if you want to just keep on knocking here and there and just be testing like testing waters uh, or like a testing, like a testing spirit, you are likely to also be tested and go along with that test and not come back. So that is why it's warning us in here to say, let every one of us learn to do what? To comport, to, to, to possess our vessel in sanctification and honor. The vessel is talking about there is your private part. This is why we always pray and plead with our sisters and even our men. There are... Parts of our bodies that that contribute seriously to this motion, to this emotion. The Bible says, compare them in what? In sanctification and in honor. For men, sight or seeing women, uh, whether one quarter, half, or one third or half naked, it's already a trigger. For most women, also, as we have heard from them, when they see muzzles like six packs and everything just tightening as if the shirt uh, was not, was borrowed from a junior brother or so, uh, it also triggers. Why are we now triggering each other? That is temptation. You are luring your opposite, your, 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 your brother or your sister into temptation. When it now happens, you now begin to say, hey, the world, come and help me, I have been raped. But you are the one that opened the door for rape. So let us be careful in these areas. Learn to comport yourself. You can dress so nicely. One day that day, I was looking at some pictures that came over the social media, and I saw our Miss Nigeria. Sorry for those of you who are not Nigerians, uh, just like Miss World. The Miss Nigeria we had in 1958. Oh, my goodness. If you see the dressing, the composition, you will know that there is natural beauty being exhibited, not the... Uh, uh, semi finish that we are trying uh, these days. May God help us in Jesus' name. So, this area has been the greatest contention in most relationships. And that is why it was the only one that God even gave to be an avenue for what? For saying you can escape. You catch her or him red handed with every proof that you did not induce it, you did not. Um, treacherously work it out for the for the for your partner you, but you caught him or her red-handed in a in an adultery mm, she can now you have violated the greatest uh, the greatest covenant so 
you are free. So I just said, feel like uh, uh, stressing that one. You can read the whole of that same chapter, uh, chapter four of uh, First Thessalonians, the first section, verses one to eight. They deal a lot with this area. So for this reason, a man shall do what? Shall live and cleave to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man put asunder or, or separate. Matthew 19, 5 to 6. Uh, they didn't call you, or God didn't call you. Don't go and start dividing homes. Oh, praise the Lord. That is the warning here. So what is divorce? The causes and consequences, and what next steps can we take? We're going to run quickly through those ones uh, shortly. Uh, I've mentioned about my disclaimer. So you hear James, John, and uh, Grace, and uh, Mary. It's not your own. No. They are also available in the Bible. After all, even your own name said you pick them from the Bible. But if you didn't pick your own, I would not likely use your own. Holy words, long preserve. Please speak to us tonight. We have no other. We just, just, I don't have any other power, no other source again. Atle wisdom has failed. But the long preserved word of God for our work with him in this world has always given us the best impartation. So tonight we pray, God, that the wisdom, the understanding and knowledge will prevail for us to accept the word of God, engrafted word of God very plainly and run with it. He says, write down division so that he that readed it with you will do what? Will run with it. So you are convinced with the word of God, then go for it. Christ is the risen indeed, and indeed he is risen. Praise God. Uh, we have just taken you through the um, uh, past week's uh, key points. Uh, but for me, as a reminder, the green box here is very key from family life. Godly homes are what? Are places where imperfect families rely on God's grace to be faithful reflections of him in the way they relate to others both inside and outside their homes, both inside and outside their church, both inside and outside their communities, both inside and outside their public or marketplaces or workplaces, we must exhibit godly homes, godly attributes, faithful reflections of who Christ is in us. That is the grace we are all calling for tonight. And grace means, if you don't need me of grace, grace means free, unmerited favor. Is always easily interchangeably used with uh, compassion or mercy. Romans chapter 9, verses 15 and 16, uh, uh, that which confirms it is a prerogative of God. This is why we have to come back to God, the owner of this institution, to find that grace, to obtain that compassion, that mercy, to do what? To be in his, in his good books and to be well, well, well directed on how to conduct our lives in Jesus. I, because he chooses to have compassion upon whom he wants to have compassion. And chooses to have mercy upon whom he will have uh, mercy. Praise the Lord. Uh, now, a poser here. Are you more naturally drawn to structure and order? Whether your personal life, career, family, or church. Oh, you are the more attracted to a life that doesn't seem to be so formalized and rigid. I know we all have our preferences. Subject to how you are wired by God and your environment that you grew in. But change is possible at every stage of life. It is not what happens to you that matters, but your reaction to it. Structure is, impos is impossible to avoid. It's already woven to a very fabric of creation and into how relationships work together for us. It's true in society, in household, and even in church. First Corinthians 14, 33 and 40 there. Uh, it is shown on the right side of the screen here right now. For God is what is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. So therefore, let all things be done how? Decently and in order. So if there's going to be decency and order, it means the rule of law must prevail. If rule of law must prevail, you must have a purpose for whatever you want to do or say. And where there is no purpose, abuse becomes inevitable. In seven distinct cycles of sin unto salvation, the book of Judges showcases how Israel set aside the law, the rules and regulations, the codes of the household. Once you set it aside, and in its place, you substitute with what? Just doing whatever is right in your own eyes. Judges 21, 25. What's the result? The recurring result of abandonment from God's law is what? Corruption from both within and oppression from without. Many of us are unopened to each other. 
our trust level is so low. Some of us are even sleeping like with eyes open. I don't know how you manage just trying to check me that my spouse is not up to another game. May God help us in Jesus' name. SWOT is an old time religion of methodology for planning, strategic planning, which takes S and W, your strengths and weaknesses, which are internal to you. It uses the strength to overcome your weaknesses on the inside and uses, exploits the opportunities from outside to overcome the threats also coming from outside. It has been proven times over and it's working perfectly today. So if you don't want to be open to corruption from within, that is you allow your weaknesses to overcome your strength instead of the other way around. If you don't want oppression from outside, that is all the opportunities from outside are being lost to what? To threats. Uh, I do not mean to defile my nation, my country, because I can see at least that we have a path, uh, a green light coming up for, for coming out of the woods or out of the, out, out of the tunnel. A situation where you have a raw material that you can use with knowledge and understanding and get whatever product, finished product you need for your life. But because of all kinds of intrigues or setting aside the law, you are now pursuing whatever deems right in your eyes, we've now become exposed to every threat from outside the nation. Our strengths, in fact, many, many don't even want to believe that we have strengths any longer because weaknesses have taken over. That will not be our portion in Jesus' name. Let me move forward. Bible references and reading, because we're in Bible study, please take a peek on this page. 1 Corinthians 3, 10 to 11. According to the grace of God, we've read it before, Christ has already laid the foundation and there is no other one that you can build other than that foundation. No other foundation that you can lay other than that one. So the, great, the call here is just take heed how you build on it. God is so good. He did not even insist so much to say you must build like this. He still say, he just says, Jerry, Jerry, take heed. Just be cautionary. Calm down. Slow down and... Uh, and work with knowledge, understanding, and what and wisdom. Look at Matthew 5, 31 to 32, that focuses on this same subject of uh, divorce. He says marriage is a sacred and a binding covenant. It's not just a contract or uh, like they do in California and Ireland. They now have what they call a drive through marriage, just like drive through uh, McDonald's or, or what's that one in Canada now? I think something hot, you know, I can't remember the name right now. Very sugary stuff, you know. Uh, uh, furthermore, as we said, whoever now divorces his wife and let him give uh, let him give her a the certificate of divorce. But the one is in 32. But I say to you, whoever divorces his wife for any reason, except what? Sexual immorality. You are causing that woman, and if it's the other way around, you're causing the man to be exposed to what? To adultery. And whoever have an affair with that person, marry, whether you marry or just have an affair with the person, you are or somebody who is claimed to be divorced, you are also committing adultery. This is a very loaded statement. Time may not have us to go through it all, uh, but we'll be trying our best uh, because I can see some questions already flying in. I would like to know your opinion as a Christian lady to marry a divorced uh, man. Watch carefully here. In the scriptures, there are levels and understanding of divorce. In fact, we'll soon get to it right now. Uh, this particular passage and the sister passage of Matthew chapter 19 uh, are, is, is focusing on those who are outside Christ, those who are not real, genuine believers. Because amongst believers, you are a child of God. It is not considered that you will have any cause to be a victim of adult, uh, adultery or fornication or whatever, as to not be saying that you are considering a divorce. It is not, it, that I'm reading just the mind of God. Though. I'm not talking about how it is with us today. Many of us have, like I said, that was referred to the other and ago. We have been defiled by the environmental influences and we are dangerously approaching that time, that point in time in the days of Mo, in the days of Jesus when he says, and in the days of Moses, which Jesus referred to and say, ah, Moses, just because of the hardness of your heart, he allowed for those things to happen. But from the beginning, it was not so. So sexual immorality alone. But even when you are separated by the so-called divorce in the scriptures in here, it says whoever goes to have an affair with that one who is divorced is committing what? Adultery. So you start wondering what then is supposed to happen. The call here is that 
the divorce here is equated to separation for a season to go and purge yourself, get yourself right with God, and begin to appreciate what you are missing by separating from your spouse. When you begin to appreciate what you are missing by, by separating from your spouse, it draws you back into action. That is what the deeper understanding of the Bible explains out. But nowadays, there are various versions. Okay, supposing uh, he walks off me or she walks off me, and I'm now one month, six months, one year, almost a decade, what should I do? I just a celibate or what? This is why I will quickly be reminding you what we read in the earlier passage that says, take it to your what? To your spirit man. Where is it now? I hope I'm not too far from it. Hey, here. Matthew, I'm sorry, Malachi 2.16. God hates what is coming to your thoughts and heart of mind, but he says, because it covers one's garment with what? With violence. This area of sexual relationship is so violent that if you have been reading your Proverbs 5, 6, and 7, 1 Corinthians 5, 6, and 7, you will see the treachery of violence that can attend to this very, very sanctified and sacred uh, uh, aspect of our relationship. It breaks homes very easily, breaks hearts very easily. It says, take heed. So I, I, if you ask me, I will say, don't do it. But if you ask the scriptures, it says, it is not said that you not do it, but it says, take heed to your spirit, which means be sensitive to what your spirit man is uh, guiding you to do. And the Lord will guide us righteously in Jesus' name. So that's Matthew 5, 31 and 32. And the same story we'll soon see in uh, Matthew 19, uh, 1 to 12. Those other passages are here, which I've already run through. This is the heart of the matter. Verse 3, the Pharisees came to him, testing him. Hey, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for just any reason? Of course, the answer is what? The answer is no. And he reminded them, have you not read? Have you forgotten that he who made all of us, God, the creator of heaven at, at the beginning, made us male and female? And he gives an instruction. For this reason, a man shall do what? Leave his father and mother and be judged as well. And the two shall become one flesh. Ephesians 5, 33 adds to this point here and says, it is a mystery. One plus one cannot easily become one, except Christ is involved. So then, they are no longer what two, but one flesh. Therefore, whatever God has joined together, let no man separate. Now, the lessons here are many, and they date back to foundation of our relationships. Sadly and very unfortunately, many of us are victims of foundational problems we did not take care of enough before we signed I do, only to come and be this to go and open the truth discovery channel from that night of wedding which begins your marriage, and then you begin to see the other side of midnight and say, sure, I didn't bargain for this. And at that time, it was like, it's just too late. But we have a God that's able to help, and where that help is not good enough for you, take heed to thy spirit and work with God on what next to do. Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, permitted it, but from the beginning, it was not so. Therefore, whoever divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality, moral, immorality, and marries another, the Bible says, committing adultery. These days, we have sufficient challenges to just say, you cannot have easily afford to stay celibate if you have been completely dehumanized before you secured your divorce. So that is why I'm quickly adding along the line, Take heed to thy word that thy spirit. Please say to your neighbor around there, take heed to thy spirit. And I do not come and say, ah, but pastor said it too. That's why. Let me just give you a poser. Do you know that if the Christendom or any aspect of the Bible could just give a small leeway to say, you know what? Whether you catch him or her or not, if you just dream it that he or she was involved in adultery, just... <clears throat> The money, I divorce you. And the letter of divorce, I have a copy somewhere around in here. It's so simple to write to. You are, I divorce you, I divorce, and I just divorce and I just walk off. Do you know how much confusion we shall cause in this world? Then pastors will not have rest because right from that very day, pastors will have a queue in his house about how many are coming with their bills of uh, divorcement and behind it, a new bill of uh, who they want to marry. May God deliver us in Jesus' name. So I believe the Bible has been so cautious with the example of John chapter 8 of that woman that was caught to showcase that we need to take our relationship very serious. Don't walk into it loosely. I think I have somewhere that says, 
people marriages divorce the, the marriages are divorcing for trivial reasons because they were also contract for trivial reasons we'll soon get to that one i'm conscious of time i'm sorry we'll take questions almost about eight o'clock because of time tonight uh 15 minutes to go what is divorce a legal process that a married couple must go through to end a marriage it's only available to married couples, not uh, Pastor Femo or no Pastor, what did you call it? Something common law. You see those kind of strange titles. That's why they don't finish, they are not short as marriage. Common law partnership. That's what you call it, my brother. My, my, my. So it's not it's not for them. It's only for those who are married. They can get divorced and only in a court. And once that process is finished, then they are both free and no longer under the bondage of that certificate of marriage. It's a process terminating the marriage or marital union. It usually entails counseling, reorganizing of the legal duties and responsibilities of marriage, thus dissolving the bonds of matrimony uh, between a married couple under the rule of law of the particular country or state. That's what Wikipedia says. Now, divorce laws vary considerably around the world, but in most countries, divorce requires a sanction of a court or other authority in a legal process, which may then involve, look at the following issues that are involved in divorce. So if you are thinking along this direction, think deeper before you set your, uh, as they say, pray for God to let you put your brain in uh, gear before you put your mouth in action or in uh, whatever. Property. Whether you are even correctly listed in the property at all or not, there are cases that the lawyers of today can make for you on how on your entitlement when it comes to say you are no longer going forward and you want to you want to you want to resolve issues. Child custody, God helps you. If you have not had a child, you might think that your case is is uh, lighter, but the emotional pain that goes with it is on on inestimable. It's like I will say the marriage cause, you bring about two sheets of paper, join them with a glue or gum. Then after a while, with while can that can range from one day, sometimes even from one hour, one day to one year to then now say suddenly you discover the new light. Like our prime minister, we are praying for him after 18 years. Suddenly discover that the two of us can no longer stay there and they have been stuck for 18 years. Then you say you now want to separate. How will you easily separate those two pieces of paper that have been gummed or glued together? We're just saying that it is not as easy as that. But if you have to do it, just have to do it. You have to go through the motion. Alimony, who pays for who? To support who? Hmm. Child visitation access. Uh, I want to see my child. I, please let us be careful how we use this title of my child, my son, my daughter. It takes two to tango. I was watching another video this afternoon. Somebody said, uh, yeah, and it's even a lady. Uh, ladies should be careful about the way they use their phrases. Men should not uh, pump them up too much. Uh, women only have X's. Is it X or Y? I don't know which one of the two that you have now. But men have the two, X and Y. So if the man does not uh, input, uh, and I just say, Lord, have mercy upon this, our alternative, uh, alternative uh, relationships. Whether the man has X or Y or X, Y, Z or A to Z, and the wife has only one, A or B or X, will the child come out without the two of them mating? So let us be careful. As children of God, we need to be very, very cautious in joining some of these uh, public uh, discourses. Uh, so uh, I need to access my child. I my child will not do my, it is our child because it takes two to tango. So access and vision is for the two of you. Parenting, Lord have mercy. Child support, then indebtedness. And this is where you will know that uh, your money is whose money? Is our money. But my money is whose money? Is my money. We can joke with it, but when it comes to reality, it can be very fierce. So in most countries, monogamy is required by law. So divorce then allows you to say you are going to be free to marry. That's the law. Praise the Lord. Divorce is different from annulment. Which I'm learning. Two main ways to formally end the marriage. One is annulment. I can't sue. The other one is divorce. And annulment requires that the marriage was even never valid. While a divorce legally concludes a valid marriage. 
Annulments require a specific set of circumstances and evidence to be granted while a divorce is easier to attain. We have had testimonies and examples before people from the pulpit. The reason why they announced three times your bans of marriage, largely for the public, but there's always the fourth one they announced on the day of marriage, on the day of wedding. Is there anyone or anyone here who has reason or cause why this thing should not proceed? Let the person say so now or forever do what? Hold your silence. It is for the sake that paraventure the two of you have concealed one very, very valid information. One very, very red card item that could invalidate your relationship. If you have consisted in that moment and you are now thinking twice about saying, ah, I don't think I can carry this weight. Can we please have some uh, time out? You can call for it and just say, sorry, I'll take a break. But here we are in the flesh. We say, eh, you dare not to. Do you know how much people, how many people have already been invited? And they have already some of them are already arriving in town. Uh, the rice woman has not slept since yesterday. And uh, they're going killing the guy ram tonight or the goat or the cow. Ah, uh, no, don't do that one. No. Ah, it's too late. I've had a story before of an old room, old man that died. Very old. And the children were so happy, ah, Baba don't go. So they were too quick. They've been waiting for the death anyway. So Baba just slept up like that and they were now rushing to do burial. Suddenly the old man woke up. They forced the man to continue sleeping in there. That we have gone too far than this one right now. That will not be your portion in your relationship in Jesus' name. So we need to be very, very careful and establish facts beyond just fiction. So you can then go back to the pastor of the church or whoever made the mistake. If there's genuine mistake to confirm that the marriage was conceived on the platform of what? Of deception. Item number two on the table below. It cannot qualify for irrecon it can qualify for irreconcilable differences. And then the person can the perpetrator may choose to go back on the pulpit and announce that he was deceived to consummate this relationship that was invalid or wrong. And thereby is invalid, is cancelling or annulling that relationship. Some are very good in hiding their first wife or wives or first husband or husbands and lead another innocent uh, spouse to the to the to the to the altar. And then once you say, hey, I do, I pronounce husband and wife, then the following night or the following day. Some are diseases like hepatitis B or whatever cannot be easily redeemed. And then you are being forced to stay celibate right from the one of your of your marriage. Brethren, we need to be careful. The calls here tonight are for sensitivity that if you do not value what you are going into, you may easily be a victim of an abuse. God forbid in our lives in Jesus' name. Reasons for divorce vary widely, beginning, as well, like I said, from sexual incompatibility, independence of both spouses. Imagine only two countries do not allow divorce, Philippines and the Vatican City. But guess what in the Philippines? <laughs> divorce for non-Muslim Filipinos is, is not legal. It is illegal. You can't divorce. Just like our own too as Christians. Those who are true believers in Christ are not supposed to be to be open or exposed to thinking or, or working about divorce. It's not legal at all. Unless one spouse is what? Is an undocumented immigrant and satisfies certain conditions. But look at the Vatican City. Theocratic state ruled by the head of the Catholic Church pew, does not allow for divorce. But does that mean that divorce grounds do not exist? No, it doesn't mean so. Let us all apply our number six as long as we are as we are sharing. What are the other reasons for divorce? We call them or group them under irreconcilable. Uh, is challengeable a question or a title? Things like a change of faith, you find it in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7. If the one that is not of Christ wants to depart, the Bible says, let him or her go. Uh, discovered red card. I'm just talking about deception right now. Adultery, that's already passed on. Adultery is part of, but a bit different from fornication. Abuses of all kinds. You just you know, Suddenly, a spouse in the house becomes the uh, training uh, or punching bags or exercises and it happens on the two sides so there's a lady in uk right now she's from the eastern part of our nigerian i've forgotten her name right now well, genuine one name you know if you see her muscles you yourself must shake and uh, she actually boldly advertised that she's looking for a partner we're still looking for suitors for her because applications are very difficult because she can really use you to practice cultural differences from god's main one 
it's only God's culture that passes and it gives all of us peace because if you can align everybody in Christ, your life is easy. I have people that are living, that are coming in marriage from one kilometer, even some less, of their two villages back home. But the kind of fight between them, in fact, one says, we don't marry from your own side. And they are one kilometer. You can walk across in the evening, evening so like God used to come in the cool of the day to come and greet uh, Adam and Eve in those days. In these villages, you can walk across. And yet they still purpose in their heart by their cultural belief that, no, 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 no. You can't marry from your own side. God help us in Jesus' name. But if anybody be in Christ, what did the scripture says? All things have passed away and all things have become what? They have become new. Last one, but not the least, lack of true love and unity. The power of love and unity is too much. You may add to the list, but uh, that's the one I can gather for you today. Uh, fornication, I was just saying earlier on, see, there are six of them. But look at adultery. It's only one at the bottom. Adultery of married and single, incest, idolatry, and adultery in honor of idol gods. They all pass for fornication. Natural halotry, spiritual halotry, sodomy, and male, male prostitution. You remember, uh, uh, what's our brother's name? Lot and his family. But adultery is strictly an unlawful relationship between who? Between men and women, whether you are single or married. So all adultery, therefore, is fornication, but all fornication is not adultery. Look at this quote to support what we have been calling ourselves for, to say, take heed from Nelson Mandela. If you are familiar with his history, this is one man that showed himself so faithful to a nation and to his family. But somehow along the line, the wife betrayed him. And by the time he came out from 27 years in prison, hear his statements. Marriage doesn't kill lust. If it does, adultery wouldn't exist. Self-control is still a requirement. And I said that, I said, in discipline and lack of control is our major challenge. Lust doesn't care if you are married or single. We just read it now to say adultery is unlawful between men and women, whether you are single or married. You may be solo mono in wisdom, David in praise, Abraham in faith or Joshua in war. If you are not Joseph in discipline, you will end up like something where in the lapse of the night, like in destruction. Your total freedom from lust is in your what? Is in your self-discipline. Half a word is enough for the well, say no to all forms of abuses. Seven types are listed in here from mental to spiritual, emotional, social, sensory, creative, and physical. Of old, we used to challenge all our ladies that their mouths are like scissors or, or razor blade that can cut from both sides and they will cut a man to nothing by the time they finish their first paragraph. The man should be looking for a way of escape. But there are men too right now who have become so prof proven in uh, social and creative and physical abuse. Uh, all these are not good. You can look at this lady up, Dr. Sandra Dalton Smith, and, and hear her uh, out on this area on YouTube. Now, causes and effects of consequences. Uh, Lord help me tonight. How many minutes more? Just about four or five minutes. Okay. Grounds for uncontested divorce in Canada. Because we are in Canada, we have to relate to our government here. In our battle, grounds of an uncontested divorce are the same as for contested divorce. And they involve what? Number one, separation for at least one year. When I say abuse, some of us are physically abusing each other. Some of you will send your spouse, whether wife or, or husband, go to basement. You can't be in this room again. Why? Uh, because you annoyed me or because this and this and this and that. You have grounds and excuse to say you are annoyed. Why separation of bed? And then you even give time and say for the first three months or six months. He will no no go no now. So if you are familiar with the grounds in Canada, you will know that that kind of, that kind of a statement or, or request is pushing you forward for just at least one year of separation. Once you secure that one, you don't need any for just for one of the following. It's not all the three. It's not uh, two over three or three over three. It's just one end of the three. So if you fall into that particular and you're trying to be understandable with your wife or with your husband and you respect the demand, okay, 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 you know what, for peace sake, I will go to the basement. <laughs> Is the beginning of your what of your exit from that place. Adultery, we've discussed that one. There's no uh, grandstanding about it. Once you are caught in that one roundly and correctly, not you are set up for it. 
then they will, of course, we'll discuss the third one too. That is abuse, cruelty towards your other spouse. Please, 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 please. You can't claim to be in love with somebody that you marry and the person becomes your easy slap mate. Somebody has argued before me before in counseling and said that his hands was just up. He didn't know how the wife's face got near the hand. I just felt something must be, maybe some nuts are loose upstairs. How can your hand just be up and, uh, and the hand that was up just met your wife's face? May God help us in Jesus' name. Apart from physical, you see other ones that are abuse, domestic violence, drug, alcohol, insults, and, and threats. Abusive behavior. This woman left her parents, surrendered her name, and became your wife. And then no place to fall back onto than in this home. And then sooner or later, you start making him or you start making her to be like a stranger. The same thing, you women, because you have crossed the borders from Nigeria or whatever country you are coming from, and you land suddenly landed in this uh, so-called greener pastures. We are still looking for the grains. Uh, plus all the brownies that is taking right now of the climate change, then, then you remember that uh, they say that women have more power here. Then you want to inflict serious damages. Let us all go back and rethink. That is our plea tonight. We are not accusing anyone for being absolutely wrong in the wrong. Or, no, it is that let us not be like them of the world. Let us explore solutions. Now, this is the way of the, of the living God. This is from the Jewish marriage Bible. Uh, the Jewish, Jewish marriage and the unbiblical un divorce and remarriage. Look at God's list for breaking a marriage vow. Only one in death. First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 39 and 40. That's where you'll find it. But look at man's list. Adultery, desertion, physical abuse, verbal abuse, fell out of love, Alzheimer's, spouse remarried, alcohol, all kind of, and the list is not complete. Though. It's still growing. Now, those who are helping us with their own definition of marriage, the LGBTQ, one, two, plus, and they have still not found uh, pronouns for themselves. They, they've developed 70 already and they are still counting. They are progressing on this, how to just break. Why so much ado about nothing? Just because you want to break what God has made. He wants us in the book of 2 Timothy 2.19. You'll find it at the base of this page. 2 Timothy 2, 19 to 21. Nevertheless, notwithstanding all this shenanigan about your uh, newfound uh, wisdom or knowledge or understanding about relationship, the foundation of the word of God standeth sure and it is sealed in the fact that God knows those who are his own. So you can't escape. But instead of delivering judgment, it ends that passage by saying, let those who want to be God's own, name the name of the Lord, please depart from what? iniquity. Let's thank God for giving us a room for escape at all times. So shall we continue in sin then and say grace will abound? It's not possible. You have to make a change. The marriage triangle is on the right of the screen for you. If you are the husband and your wife, that is the farthest place you could ever be if you fake focus on God and walk towards God. If you leave and cleave, not to leave a home, cleave to, cleave to a woman and your flashlight of eyes are still dashing around the whole city uh, showcasing them that the six pack has the six packs are still alive. The Lord help us in Jesus' name. The first secret, though, to loving others is to immerse yourself first and foremost in the love relationship with God, Son, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Uh, when and why has this first love gone wrong? More often before marriage, if you don't do a good foundational work and premarital counseling. But like I said, God is able to help you restore your foundation if you seek for help. Some, it's just after marriage. Ah, some are worse. After 20, 25 years, even 30 years, they might say they are going apart. Let us just continue to pray for them because it's a terrible negative influence. Truth be told, we all know where and how it happened. So track yourself, admit your faults, then you'll be on your steady way to solution. And be like that woman in John chapter 8. After all said and done, what did Christ tell her? Christ didn't rebuke her. He didn't accuse her. He didn't. Uh, he just says, "Go and sin no more." Now we so, let us no longer suffer from ignorance. If Christ came in flesh in December, we choose to be celebrating him. It's not because of lack of better things to do that we are all celebrating and flying all those kites of uh, Christmas celebrations. No, it's for a genuine reason that we are confident and purposeful that a man came in flesh. God Himself came in flesh. People touched him. They felt him. They spoke with him. Then he lived for 33 good years, three last three years in ministry. And he says, I will lay down my life, die, and I will come back in three days. And he showcased that one before us. No other God has been able to try that till today and not forever will happen. 
So I, I don't, I, I need no, no other argument. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and that he died for. That is my own argument, my contention. If you therefore know your God, you don't need any other argument. Every other or every alternative savior have been retired early enough. That is the meaning of Easter. So check your foundation, reset it, and avoid every form of uh, abuse, as we said. Praise the Lord. Ah, Lord help me tonight. Okay, 802. Maybe I'm going to stop in here. The whole race here, thereby for power of love and unity is uh, enhanced in uh, Ephesians 4, 1 to 6. Endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit where? In the bond of peace. One body, one spirit, one hope of our Lord, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, one Father of all, above all, through all, and in you all. This is a true measure of power of unity that God is looking at. So Ephesians is another very good chapter, <clears throat> another very good book in the Bible. I'm recommending to join my earlier recommendations of uh, the book of Proverbs and the book of uh, 1 Corinthians 5, 6, and 7. You can take the whole of these six chapters. There are very few. Chapters 1 to 3 talks about become aware about what you have in heavenly bank account towards you to help you. Adoption as a child of God, acceptance, redemption, forgiveness. You have all that. So, and then in 4 to 6, it teaches you how to now walk deeply rooted in that spiritual way that you have in 1 to 3. Therefore, should be given to good works and walk in that one. Jesus is the light of the world, so walk with him in the light of his word. And what a glory it will continue to shed upon your way. Now, talking about the laws, isn't it marvelous, brethren, that from the beginning of creation, we had 2,713 commands. It includes the ones before Moses, oh, this 2713. But see how God steadily walked his way and reduced this to 613, to 10, to 2, and to 1. And in that one, you will almost see all the 2713 commands. Love your neighbor as yourself. And he says, if you can just do that one, you have, you have just passed the mystery. May God help us in Jesus' name. Last letter that he wrote before he left us, uh, oh, after he, after he left us as he appeared unto John in the book of Revelation chapters 2 and 3 is to let us know how we look like in the representation of the seven churches. Marriage is a representative of the church. So find your church here, brethren, in your relationship. If you're not married, find what relationship, what kind of church you want to walk towards. Do you want to walk towards Ephesus that forgot their first love? even though there's still room for them to correct. Or Smyrna, ready to accept our persecution and just be rejoicing in Christ. Or Pagamos, compromising. They say they are bending today, you bend with them. They say they are whining tomorrow, you whine with them. Or corrupt church, they are deceiving themselves, thinking that they are serving God. They lie and use another lie to cover another lie. Or the saddest, in fact, this is a very sad church. They are dead, and yet they think that they are alive. It's a very sad church. Or are you going to be in Philip, Philadelphia church? Faithful in all your ways, or look one. I highlighted the grain that passed the test. I pray that all of us will walk our ways out into those two in Jesus' name. Lastly, what are the next steps for divorce? There are emotional stages from the modern family and law. I came across this uh, popularly acclaimed and preached uh, uh, six stages of uh, of uh, emotional stages on divorce. Uh, Shock and denial, anger, beginning, depression, and acceptance. <clears throat> For any of our brethren in this particular pit, we certainly identify with you and pray God for a quick getting out of this emotional journey onto a new level of moving forward in Jesus' name. Work with the Spirit of the living God for your direction for moving forward. This knowledge is very critical. It empowers you to navigate the stages of divorce with greater awareness of compassion for yourselves. It's critical to acknowledge and allow yourself to experience it. It's critical to you to push out to seek for help. Get psychologists, therapists, counselors. Please use them. And then, of course, be bold enough, convinced enough, working with, the, working with the Lord to start a new journey of your life in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Of course, the channels of help are listed I think I'm about shooting now by how many minutes? Uh, seven minutes. Okay. The floor is now open for contributions and comments before we end up in prayers. <sighs> Thank you, Jesus. Comments, contributions, questions.
Okay. Ah, all right. While you are still thinking up your own questions, the Slido is already loaded. We're going to work fast. The ones we can take today, the ones we cannot, we will continue later uh, through our natural channels. The first one I'm seeing in here says, rape is very sensitive. It's unfair to say a raped woman opened the door for rape. We are humans and no means no. Men should know that and no excuses to use force. Uh, can I have all the men online say, yeah, I hear you. Unmute now and say you hear them now. They are making a plea right now. And we're all playing like we are holier than thou. Pastor, we have people in this church. Show. They are so holy. The Lord help us. I join and I anchor your request in a system. And a woman says no, she means no. Don't force it. Let it happen naturally. Let there be a mutual consensus for it. You have spoken, my brother. I don't know the name, but you know yourself. I've replied to you. Uh, next, next one says, I agree that. I agree that modest and decent dressing is very, very key. However, a woman's dressing should never be a reason for rape. We should teach our men self-control too. Mm, wonderful question, a wonderful statement. My response, because of time, I wish we really have all the time to dig into all this one. Some things are easier said than done. Let us not live in self-deceit. Let us not live in self-deceit. You women are not like electric lamp like men we men the uh, rate at which we accelerate to uh, being in the mood for sex sometimes it passes the way the speed of ferrari from zero to 100 kilometers per hour especially when we see those curves those uh, the parism of AIDS or the exposures of the boobs or the... I'm being practical. Please, and if you are a man here and you are approaching close to a woman and your body is not responding, I think you need to see us for a special treatment because that is not the way God designed us. It's being practical. That is why even finding some touches, even though they are just deceiving themselves, they say men sit on the left, women sit on the right. That is not what I'm talking about here right now. But if we dress decently, you minimize distraction. I'm supposed to be looking at the pastor on stage or whoever is ministering and hear the word of God. But when the pastor now says, hey, say to your neighbor, it is well with you. And when I turn to my neighbor, what I see is a different neighbor. I, it is, I can't say it is well very clearly. Then you say I should not fall a victim. Let us be practical here. Men are moved more by what they see. Women are moved by their emotions. Women, if you like, do all your abracadabra. If you cannot talk them into the motion, the end, there is no open, there is no open door. There is, there is, forget about it. They don't run by just uh, your body is hot. I, I'm going to take cold water now and cool it down. You must be able to speak your way into get, wake, wake, waking up her emotions. So my sister, whoever wrote this one, or whether it's a brother that wrote it, we're just being practical. Yes, self-control, we agree. That's why I took you to First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 1 to 8. That each of us, both male and female, must learn to do what? To comport their vessels. Comport it in uh, sanctification and in honor. There's a lady in a church in Lagos. She came for Bible study like this one evening. <laughs> and what she wore, from the very far angle I was on the other side of the aisle, uh, God help us in Jesus' name. My eyes could not help but to see that the full coverage was live. So instead of me to be looking at the stage and be watching the Bible verses and whatever they are saying, I made a mistake of looking that left direction. And what I was seeing was dangerous. But God knew how to help me that day. Guess what happened? We didn't know who was going to preach. We thought to just be a regular person that was going to preach that day. Guess who they sent to us from the headquarters? The man that will come and preach on uh, the church doctrines. And when headquarters sends you a pastor to come and preach on some of those old foundational doctrines, you will know that those men are the men of the old part of the old original faith of the church who tolerates nothing. They can't see. The moment this sister cited that pastor that is the one coming to preach, she just disappeared from the front seat where she was sitting and, 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 and went and looked for a pastor to wrap herself and hide in the back. Must we wait for that? 
Most pastors get to the stage and some ladies have already lined themselves up in front to say they must get hold of this pastor. And then, uh, like this is from my old uh, pastor in Portacourt in those days, he said whenever he mounts the room and he saw some ladies who have been lined up by the devil to come and confuse his life on the stage, just opening their laps anyhow, Everybody stand up and rise up and just let us praise the Lord. And you just find us beginning to praise the Lord and sing hallelujah. What he was doing there is to avoid distraction. Then he will call the ushers, please go and reassign and relocate those uh, uh, the agents of, uh, of darkness. It, we don't have to be that way. Like I said, I saw Miss Nigeria 1958 and I still see many other ones neatly and sharply dressed, mentally and all wise. We call them beautiful on the inside and on the outside. <laughs> Nowadays, we just copy that phrase. I don't know how, how many are really beautiful on the inside anymore now. Next question says, sorry, oh, you see our contribution, so uh, I will rush this one in the next five minutes. It's like 8.13, wow. I agree that most addressing. If I'm a Christian woman and my husband may not be fully submissive to God, does that mean I can refuse to be submissive? No. You can't refuse to be submissive to him just because he's not yet fully submissive. It is by your own life example of being submissive that you are going to make a change in his own life. I think Pastor Adiogun gave an example, very good one last week here on this one. Uh, and I've had it also on some other platforms. You see, many men or women are doing that to want to test the comfort level they really have at home. That man that was abusing that woman calling for pandediam at 9 o'clock in the morning just because he knew that it was already almost having time for the woman to go to church. was the same one after eating pandediam, followed the woman to church. And he didn't know, he didn't know that God has already orchestrated it. He would only walk in when the, service, when the sermon was about to be concluded. And what normally ends sermon? Not the altar call. He got there, caught only the gist of five or ten minutes of the message, and then the altar call. He was the first to appear in stage to, to surrender his life, knowing that truly he has just been oppressing the woman at home. So let us not live by the this is, a, this is an alternative way of the world. So they, they because, yes, I said it sometimes last year. If, if a woman does not see a man that is submissive to God, the chances are high that he will, she might hold you responsible and not want to be fully submissive to you. It does not mean that it's a pattern. I'm only warning men before you start walking your way to be like the RSM in the barracks or like the Lord of the Rings or Lord of the Manor. Take note that with the women who are also watching you because if they can't see full submission in you to the God according to your own calling, uh, love your wife as Christ loved the church and was ready to die for you, then they may be checkmating their own submission to you as well. It's a warning. It's a norm. It, does, it does not mean that it is a norm. Praise the Lord. I would like to know your opinion on a Christian lady marrying a divorced man. We asked it last week, but again today I will say, take heed to thy spirit. Uh, where is that uh, last slide? Go and pray about it. Go and seek help and counsel. Go for marriage course, a premarital course in particular, marital counseling before you make that kind of a major decision of life. Praise the Lord. Uh, and even if you if you serve a good if you work in a good church, they will not allow you to just jump off your cover. But what often happens is that some of ourselves we deceive ourselves. When we know that the church will not allow you, you run now to go and commit your crime, then come back with a baggage of sin. And ah, we are back. I, I travel, and now we are married. Eh? How did it happen? Where and how? Uh, the rest is, uh, as they say, history. God help us in Jesus' name. I believe abuse is more damaging in marriage due to several psychological effects. How do you advise a person in an abusive marriage? Come out. I'm saying it loud and clear. If you are sure about being terribly physically abused, the coming out, I didn't say you should come out in uh, divorce. I didn't say you should come out in arrogance. Come out and seek for help according to this page. Be praying. If you are praying in season and out of season, and you seek help, there must be solution. But if your life is threatened, don't wait to be silenced and there's no room for you to defend again. But come out with hard evidence. You saw, we just read now, even Canada as a government says you must provide evidence. Where is it now? Canada, Canada, Canada. Plaintiff, look at the last line. Plaintiff, plaintiff must show evidence of those cruel actions. So don't just come out and say, well, I've already plotted for him. You know, it, it just struck me on the face, and that is it. No, that's not in it at all. That is not enough. He must be able to have concrete evidence. It's not the orchestrated one. He warned us in that uh, Malachi 2 16. Don't be treacherous. That's a treachery if you planned it and then you now want to use it. That's like a Pharisee or the Sadducees. 
But please, we don't con since the death of our sister, that is a singer in Nigeria, and many more that have followed. Uh, no, is no government or serious church will condone. Uh, I'm just hanging in there for the sake of my children. And I don't want the world to know that we're having challenges until they finish barrier your barrier. Then they will know the rest of the story. Question, please. You say women have mouths sharp like razor blade. Is it safe to say that there are women who speak calmly so we don't just generalize? Ah, yes, I surrender. Well, I was not generalizing. I was just saying that some women, but thank you for my correction. I, it's well taken, sir or ma. Uh, number next one says, parents should teach our daughters to be modest in their dressing and moms should be good role model for our girls. She can know. Thank you, sir, for whoever made this suggestion. And I've read it for the whole house. It's recorded with the recording for today, so it can still be listened to for eternity that we are coveting, we are conversing, we are pleading. That is the role of the church. Christ is not coming here with a dagger and a, and a stick in hand to compel. That's one thing that makes Christianity so sweet. It's not by fire, by force. It's by conviction of your inner man. Because you already took that, you took that control from Genesis chapter 3 and the Adamic 4 to know what is good and what is what and what is evil. And God says he will not contest with you. But when he left us for the whole of the Old Testament, we could not regulate of the thousand and one offerings and sacrifices to, to, be, to, be, to be redeem ourselves from our sins. He sent his only begotten son to say, okay, now look who might find where all this was. If only you can believe in this one I'm sending to you right now and, and change your ways, then I will overlook your sins because I will see his blood and that will cover your sins. It does not mean that your sins are uh, totally not there. But when they put a blanket, we'll be seeing the white, we won't see the dirty way they under. That is the message out there. So please, parents, we are counseling, we are pleading. If we don't leave that kind of a landmark for our children, they will grow up and become something else. Sometimes I convict, I convict myself. I wish I have that picture. I don't have it again right now. But if I choose next time, when I was in school, and we wear our own trouser and our shirt in those days, going or planning for parties. And the shoes that we wear, these are the shoes, they are higher than you ladies' shoes. Wooden like this, almost like six inches or nine inches. There's no way I can't fall on that kind of a job or that kind of a of a of a wooden uh, uh, shoe. But we call it fashion in those days. I almost convinced myself, say, have I not contributed to some of these our young ones now, now drilling and wearing all kinds of things? Somebody went and bought a whole trouser in the marketplace and paid almost $50 or $100 for it. And they already cut one eye onto it at the knee level on both sides. It's like wearing rags. I said, that's the latest in town. The pants is showing above the, above the trouser at the backside. Whether the pants was washed at all or not, we don't know. May God help us in Jesus' name. Our uh, parents should teach our daughters. Uh, second to the last, we should also let our sons know that decency is more value than beauty. Not only that, I'm, I'm re echoing it, decency is uh, more value than beauty. I pray for all our parents here online today. When our children's church or teenagers church, when they are arranging programs, please also hear us out. Let's encourage fellowship that will bring these two people together more often than not. Let them watch movies together, uh, play games together, come around together, hold some very decent parties where they will dress and you will be able to discuss openly, ah, this is your dressing, it, gets, it remains small low. We can lead you to a church backyard and go and borrow you one that to, to, to change you out. Things like that that will make people Let's make it very friendly, not convicting as if they have committed one sin that we have not seen before and then you want to crucify them. No. Make, let them learn correctively in a way that they will be so loving to want to be reabsorbed back. I used to say that you, if you go to parties together, whether it's somebody says birthday party or wedding or whatever, and you see a lady that you, you, you are attracted to, before you go and say hi, check your own checklist first. How oh, of you don't have checklists? Develop a checklist, red, green, and red, yellow, and green. What are the red lines? What are the yellow ones that you can consider that we can talk about and then turn them to green? What are the green ones? They should be at the back of your mind. So that when you go to knock door, if she decides to want to talk with you, you must be prepared and not be looking into the ceiling and be saying M, M, M all the time. And if it is not going well, don't take an offense. Just consider, well, it's okay. Maybe I didn't plan it for that one. I'll try better next time. And then move on. 
and you let the suit be decent with your nailing, or your, or your saying no. Don't make it look like as if uh, the man owed you or they assaulted you. No. Oh, I love the way you came to me to discuss. Indeed, I really appreciate you. However, at this material point in time, maybe I'm not just yet in, not yet in the mood, or I'd like to consider one or two other things. And if, if it's going to work out, definitely it will work out. I'll see. We'll keep in touch. Let's just keep in touch. I'm just, let's just be friends. And indeed, if you are not friends first, you can't easily enter into a good relationship. I can tell you up front. If you are the one, hey, I'm just looking for marriage. Carry your placard. Who wants to marry me? That's not how to start. You must first be friend and friend, friend be friendly to have a friend before you can start talking about relationship. Because we're talking about a long lasting and lifetime relationship. Finally, on this side for me, last one, wow, 23. Unholy and ungodly dressing should be discouraged for men and women. It seems this is the pattern nowadays. What can the church do to help? Okay, the church has had you. Pastors online and all the leaders of the church have had, so maybe they will respond to this one in due course, but I'm assuring you the church has had you. Three minutes more for others to now contribute. I've tried to address all the questions that came on the slide for now. You can still load more, I guess, next week. We still have two more weeks. We are discussing next week about parenting in today's terms, or in today, that is raising children in the current climate. And in the last week, oh, wow, 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 we're going to deal with economy of the of the kingdom. How do you solve that economically? And I thank, I want to thank the academy of our Christian Education University of, uh, of uh, the House of David Parish. They chose the right material for that uh, uh, acid work. It's from Ijebu and Ijebu Igbo. If you know the meaning of what I'm talking about, Ijebu Igbo and Ijebu Igbo and Ijebu Jesha. Those are the people that know how to turn uh, coins of uh, grains of uh, of uh, of granite into money overnight. They will teach us. So, be can I for... quickly say something, sir? Yes, the floor is open, ma'am. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about you know our the men, our children, our sons. You know, as we are teaching the daughters, I know you said the sons and the daughters should be taught, but the sons particularly to learn how to treat a, a women, train, learn how to treat their sisters, you know, ladies and all that. We need it. You know, that, that, that's a um, consciousness. That's a good attitude towards, you know, the woman. The, to, because, you know, we, I find out that a lot of times we take so much time to teach all the girls, you know, this is what you should do. And besides, you know, um, girls usually have opportunity to do different kinds of, you know, get together meetings. We're always having meetings with other, but men, we need men to mentor our boys. We need men to come together. You know, women are always praying. They're always having one thing to the other or the other. They will gather together and do this thing and their daughters are there. But what about the sons? Who will mentor the sons? You know, um, God will help us to be able to train our sons how to be polite, how to be cautious, how to to respect the women, to respect women and see them as the weaker vessel that God calls them, not because they are weak or they are foolish or stupid, but because they are delicate. It's right. a learning, it's a skill that we need to you know put into our sons so that when they now get older and talking to ladies, they want to marry or they have a wife, they will behave better. God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. There's a lady in our church in Lagos. Her specialty is teaching on etiquette. Idea to put across our um, teenagers' uh, department and other relevant ones in the church, and even including my own department too, marital relations department, marital relations department. Let's find a way of bringing this children up in the way of the godly etiquette of relating with each other. Those old wives' fables of saying, yeah, you are a man, which must be, you must be strong and be, and be strong and strong. You are saying that they must be wicked. And you're just saying strong, strong, strong. So they must knock people down, make themselves fair, presence unknown. That is a sergeant of the barrack style or a lot of the manner style. It does not work. What we are saying, and it, the, the women in question, the ladies, are they strangers to us? They are either our own sisters or daughters of our friends or our family friends or relations or brothers and sisters in Christ in church. So why should I be trained up as because I'm a man? I think it's a very serious point that's been made here and, and I leave it up for all departments in the church. 
So even if you are meeting together in your apartment, whether you are usher or whatever, treat ladies with rest, with uh, with uh, with uh, with uh, compartment, with caution, and that way you also earn your all respect back. Like I used to say, mutual respect or mutual honor is what is reciprocal. Is uh, is two way street. You don't do it, you don't get it. That's just simple as that. And if you don't get it, then you can maybe forget it. Okay. Any more comment or question? Okay. There's one. One minute to go. I want to go to prayers right now. This prayer is very serious for me and for all of us. You can we don't we don't have to finish it today, but you must take it. Hallelujah, sir. Sorry, I know the time has passed. I just want to speak to that uh, uh, issue around indecent dressing. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's very important that we as Christian, we must not be swept away by the uh, what is the trend because yeah. we tend to we tend to forget that we are children of God. It doesn't really matter what is the trend. Right. When uh, the Hollywood made a piece of cloth and they themselves call it rag cloth, rag shirt, rag jeans. They call it rag. Mm -hmm. And a Christian is putting that on. Mm -hmm. So it's, it doesn't match. Mm -hmm. So we must be very careful. It doesn't really matter how popular such a, a, a style is if mm -hmm. it's not consistent with decency as the scripture has taught us as Christian, please we must not put it on. May yeah. God bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, sir, for that uh, addition. And my extra addition to that too is that please make sure that we learn how to correct in love. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 to 4 tells about father-children relationship or parents children relationship. You will hear more next week when we treat about when we talk about uh, when the next teacher will talk about parenting today. The fact that a child is wearing rings in her nose, in his nose or head or tail everywhere, all kinds of things like that, like my, like my pastor just said right now. And you want to correct, it's not by fire and by force, otherwise that child will be thrown off balance. And instead of coming to correction, you will lose him more to the world. Let's learn to correct our children in love, in ways that they will really welcome it. So finally, we have only two minutes to just walk through this one and then you will take it home. There are serious prayers that, just, that we just discovered out of this same Easter season. Guess what? We're going to thank God for the word that is profitable to direct as we have been shared, so as we've been sharing to date. We're going to learn from Jesus shedding his precious blood on that cross at Easter. A preacher, Pastor Jensen uh, Franklin, brought these seven points up that Jesus bled on seven key points and they were for our healing of those seven key areas. He sweat while he was at the Garden of Gethsemane. is to heal our will because he said in that garden, not my will, but that will be done. And that is also emphasizing the mutual submission we've been preaching, Ephesians 5, 21, 33, and 6, and 6 9. He swear they put a thorn or a crown of thorns upon his head. Blood began to flow. Sorry, uh, yes, Tom. Uh, 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 Tom, Be sorry, Tom Beard. Not not the thorn on the head yet. Number two. Ah, I didn't know this so until this week. Isaiah fifty verse six. Isaiah fifty verse six. They actually pulled the beard of Jesus. Oh. That is why he says in 53, 1 to 3, that his face was uncomely. It was nothing to behold or to, be, to, be, to, 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 to look at at all. So terrible. They tore his face through his bed. That bleeding there is to heal our image. Are you feeling hated? Either in your shapes or looks, they say you are too fat, you are too slim, you are too this, you are too that, or you are trapped in wrong bodies. All those wrong languages. I'm, I'm feeling like I'm a man, even though I'm a woman. Ah, God forbid. Fearfully and wonderfully, God has made you. You are going to claim the healing power of resurrection from this bleeding and use it to pray for your image redemption in Jesus' name. They put a thorny crown on his head. He was bleeding from the head. We are told that is to heal our mind. Your mind, your brain needs a reset. 
we have not recovered from uh, after COVID. Because COVID came, no job again. Some of us have just been sitting down at home and doing next to nothing and falling into depression. You need only a renewal of your mind. Let's claim the power of resurrection tonight. That for Jesus Christ to have bled in the head, I, 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 I reclaim my, 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 my healing back here. I'm sorry about the extra five minutes tonight. Please forgive me. But this person is important. I'll just explain and then we pray. We'll, we'll, we'll take it over as, as prayer points. The blood, the blood in his back, that is to, uh, uh, to heal our body. By his stripes, we are healed. His hands are nailed. It was to heal the works of our hands. You feel that you are, you are not productive or your labor of love is not being realized? No. Plead the blood of Jesus and claim the power of resurrection to make your works become productive and, uh, and impactful. They nailed him on his feet. That is to heal our work with God. You have been working out of tune with God tonight. Every mystery you have, ex you have experienced, God can turn it around if you walk with him from this. And then the final, which is most important and relevant to the topics we have dealt with so far this week and this month and still dealing with, they pierced him on his side, the raven side. Guess what? That's the same raven side where God created who? His helpmate, for a helpmate for Adam. And when Adam saw that helpmate, what did they call him? Or what did they call the heavenly? He said, wow, man. That is how we form a woman. So for the healing of our relationships, our fellowships, we can pray the blood. That's all I have for us tonight. Let's begin to thank God and bring out your offering and then take note of all these prayer points, take the picture and then just begin, continue from there. For Father, we want to thank you for tonight. I appreciate you and apologize for the little extra time tonight. But every one is in your presence. It's always a wonderful time to be here. We want to claim every part of resurrection in the life of every listener tonight and those who will be listening or watching that our study will not be in vain. Our sacrifice of rummaging through your world will not be in vain. Everyone who is hurting in their willpower, struggling to surrender their willpower, struggling for mutual submission with their spouses or with their children. Ah, everyone who is feeling hated or wrong shape in their bodies, their image will be healed from tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone suffering from one kind of a brain or mind power problem, depression, whatever, Father, let there be renewal of their minds today. By your stripes, we have been healed. The works of our hands, Father, please anoint in the fresh dimension by the precious blood that we shed on Calvary, that we shall become impactful. By our works, Lord, we say we shall be we shall be so productive and. Uh, 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 I will not lack any good thing. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 12. You bless the work of our hands, the waters uh, of, our, of, our, of our duties. Our work with you, Father, take us out of every misery. People walking cluelessly, you can even write, read upon their head as if they are they are deluded and they are they, they, they are missed. They are, Father, please restore them. Let there be a turning point for us to come back. And finally, our relationships. Many homes are hurting. Many couples are in dire street, not even knowing how to progress. Please give us great to Surrender our willpower unto you and work with you from this day forward in a renewed relationship, renewed fellowship. Why? Because they broke your even side on the cross. And from that same even side that you brought forth a woman for us. Give us great to appreciate all this. You're bleeding on the seven perfect points on the cross and are receiving our healing. Therefore, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. For everyone who is giving tonight out of the abundance of their hearts, cheerfully and joyfully. Father, please accept our offerings. Multiply for your kingdom use. Take all the glory which you man shall contend and let the blessings be ours for good we ask and pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, our Father in heaven. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Shall we share the grace in fellowship? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and, rest abide, and with abide with us now forevermore. Amen. Amen. Surely, because we rest and rest and rest and rest and rest and all the days, All of, the our days of our lives, and we, we shall, shall dwell, dwell in the house of the Lord Amen. forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you once Amen. again for coming out tonight. I'm sorry about the question time that took uh, the extra five minutes.